Hi, it's me, Marilee Mostov from the Bainbridge Island Historical Museum. On today's episode of The Curious Curator, I'm checking out the island's only skate park, or more specifically, Skate Bowl, at Strawberry Hill Park. The Rotary Skate Bowl was built 20 years ago. I'm meeting with Andy Caro, one of the pioneers of skateboarding on the island, to find out more about the history of skateboarding here. In 1977, I got my first wooden skateboard, and it was game on. I just buy new boards, learning tricks. We started reading Skateboarder Magazine. Um, you know, nobody up here just knew about that culture. It was me and two or three friends. We were like the only skaters on Bainbridge. In 1978, we built our first ramp and we used to roll it up to the high school and turn it sideways and take it inside the tennis court and lean it up against the concrete wall and ride up the wall. So that was our first one. Uh, the evolution of probably really Bainbridge or Strawberry is we built a ramp uh, for some kids, I was on a professional trick team, Captain America trick team based off Bainbridge Island. It was um, two BMX riders and two skateboarders. So we built a half pipe down by Linwood Center. The neighbors hated it. So we had to get rid of the ramp. And we talked to Dr. Kitamoto, Frank, and his son was skating, Derek, and he was really good. And I said, hey, can we build a big vert ramp in your backyard? And he's like, okay. We built a full on vert ramp, 24 feet wide with a channel, the whole 80s ramp. And that got a lot of, a lot of, a lot of Seattle skaters came over and used it. And then around 1986, somebody mentioned that this park, Parks and Rec might be interested in a ramp. I went to a park meeting, Chuck Field was the director at the time. And uh, they did their whole spiel and they said, does anybody have any other business? And I'm like, yeah, hey, I wanna propose a skateboard ramp right here. And I showed him a bunch of photos and said I had done it at Dr. Kitamoto's house, who was you know, a pretty prominent guy on the island. And they said, well, what would it cost? And I said, "I $3,000 in materials. And they're like, okay. So we built the ramp right here, um, which was a lot different. There was a berm all the way around the perimeter because apparently there was uh, Nike gas tanks and the Army Corps of Engineers had still not taken them out and they were destined to be taken out. So I made the entire ramp so it would unbolt because I figured someday we might need to move it anyway. So in 1986, 1987, I taught lessons for the park district. Uh, a lot of guys from Seattle came and skated it. Jeff Amet from Pearl Jam is a big skater and he's built a lot of skate parks. And he uh, did an article in Thrasher about a year ago and mentioned me in the park and, or the ramp and, and that he used to come here and skate. So it got known. It was also supposedly the first public west, uh, public ramp on the West Coast. I was competing a lot, most of the 80s, and I was in California at a contest, and I came back, and they destroyed the ramp. So sadly, that's where that ended, two years. And then we built some more ramps, lots of mini ramps around the island. And then around 2000, I want to say that somebody got the idea like, hey, let's get a concrete park because that was becoming the thing. I did a drawing, an initial drawing, and then Grindline, which is one of the biggest park builders in the world now. They were just guys we skated with in the 80s. They were based out of West Seattle. Um, they bid on it. I think it was their second or third park that they'd ever done. And now they've literally, I think, built hundreds. And this is still like probably one of the more organic parks. And, you know, it's got its little funny things because they were just learning how to do it. But um, it's great because it's, you know, kind of the kitty park, we call it at the top, all the way down to a decent sized bowl at the bottom. So we were really lucky to get this. Do you think people come from off the island to skate on this park? They come from, they probably literally come from around the world. The Northwest has, as I understand it, more skate parks than anywhere else. So we're a destination for It's a bit of a destination, yeah. If people, um, like professional skate teams, it seems like every year at least one big team from California, they'll come and do like a Northwest tour because there's so many cool parks. And they'll go through Oregon and uh, and Washington. And I think this one's still on, on the short list, probably a, you know, a top 10, for, just for fun. So you're part of the early pioneers, really developing the sport and the craft as it is? In the Northwest, I mean, the California was the place and they were ahead of us. You know, they had the magazines first and the skate parks first. Um, but we were only a few years behind. And I think there's something about Northwest skaters. You know, they've always been super tenacious and, you know, we have to battle the elements. There's a camaraderie too. Like this, this shirt, I'll show this off on my back. 
is an old guy skate club. We have all guys in Seattle, basically all 50 years old or older. Andy, thank you so much for your time today, for coming out here with me and teaching me a little bit about the history of this park and skateboarding in the Pacific Northwest. You're welcome.